Hello and welcome to the RevitKid.com. Uh, what I'm going to do today is start the student to student guide to Revit. Now what I have here is I have a CAD file that I'm going to use. It's a house I did in a design, a design class uh, a few semesters ago and well more than a few semesters ago this is before I knew Revit and I did it in CAD. So I figured a good way to teach some to teach Revit is to do a house from start to finish and this house has a lot of different uh, qualities that I can use that would help out and to teach you guys Revit at the same time. So what I have in the first floor is I have a CAD file this is my first floor plan. Now you can see me zooming in and out of it and if I go in 3D it's there. So this is on the first floor level. Now I'm going to import the one uh, the second floor level now. So what I do is I go to File, Import Link, and CAD Formats. Now I'm going to click my second floor. So now you have some options over here. You have Link, Current View Only, uh, black, uh, the Colors, Layers, Import Units, Positioning, and where it's going to be placed. So now I'm going to use Link. What Link is, it's almost like an X reference um, in CAD. So if I was to update this CAD file and reload it into Revit, it'll stay in the same position and it'll load the changes. Now current view only will keep it only in the second floor uh, second floor plan view. That's the only place you'd see it. Now for the most part that's that's not a bad option but just for the sake of this um, tutorial I kinda wanna leave it so you can see it everywhere. So I'm gonna leave it in I'm gonna turn off current view only. Now I like to bring it in black and white only because if you can see in the uh, preview corner I have a lot of yellow layers and, and different colors and on the white background it's not very pleasing to look at so all my, I want to leave all my layers on you can actually specify what layers you want to import so if you only want to bring in uh, a wall layer or something you can actually do that but I'll bring them all in and import units I'm going to keep at auto detect um, I think the only reason really to change this would be if you had like a site plan or just something with a with a whacked out scale factor um, positioning I'm going to leave auto center to center and this is the second floor plan. So see, I have options of which floor plan I want to put it on, or which level, I should say. I'm going to bring it into the second floor. So click Open, and now it's going to load it into the second floor. And as you can see, it actually loaded it directly on top, which is nice, or almost directly on top. So let me just MV for move, and move it to this little corner here. Okay, so now I have it lined up on top. I have the first and second floor plan. Now, as you can tell, the first floor plan is sort of grayed out. And I'm going to show you how I do that. I think it looks a lot better and it's a lot easier to work with. Um, so I'll go to VG, which is, uh, I'm typing on the keyboard, keyboard shortcut, for visibility graphics. And now I'm going to, uh, well, well, I'll explain visibility graphics, I guess. What this is, is this is almost like, uh, I guess freezing and unfreezing layers in CAD if you want to compare it if you're a CAD user. If, if you're not a CAD user, you're turning off and on families in Revit. You're going to turn off categories and families. So if you want to turn the ceilings off or if you want to override them or half tone them or transparent, this actually, you use this a lot and it becomes very, very powerful once you get to use it. And you can see there's model categories and then there's annotation categories. So there's notes and line work and then there's the actual physical model. But what I'm doing is I'm going to go into import categories and you can see here we have the first floor and second floor and if you expand these you have all your layers lined up and these are your layers from CAD so you can actually turn on and off layers but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the first floor because I'm in the second floor level and I'm going to half tone this is, what I, this is how it looks nice and gray is I'm going to actually half tone the entire thing so I click apply click OK now you can see it's only the second floor and it's a nice gray scale now if I go to the first floor here's my first floor plan and now you won't see the second floor plan because it's above and I'll show you what I mean so in 3D view you can see my floor plans are actually above each other they're set on whatever layers I have in elevation so here's in here's my elevation view if it opens here we go so you can see that my second floor plan is actually set on this elevation so wherever this moves the floor plan is going to move the CAD drawing is and the first floor is set on the, f the first floor elevation so let me go back to the first floor now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on to an elevation view I'm going to add one of my sections just so I can set up my levels and this is what's pretty cool about it is I'm going to go to file import link 
CAD formats. And I'm pretty sure this works. I haven't done it in a while. But now I'm going to bring in my one of my sections. So I'll bring in section one, the same thing, click OK. And if you notice in 3D, I have this uh, in my elevation view, I have my section now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I type uh, MV for move. I'm going to grab the uh, first floor and line it up with the first floor. So now this is a nice easy way for me to sit here and actually set up these levels, which I'll show you in the next tutorial. So if I go into 3D view, looks a little wild. Um, you can see all the different 3D things. But, as you can tell, just by using this in elevation and first floor, it's going to be very nice and easy to model our building. Um, so that's about it for for the, the importing AutoCAD. Uh, let me just show you again. If I go to VG in this view, uh, which is visibility graphics, and I go to import categories, you can see it has all uh, the floor plans are all on. So let me turn the floor plans off, and I'm going to half tone the section just so it looks nice. So now you can see here, here's my levels, and then here's my sections. So it's easy enough to just move move the levels up, move the levels down, and uh, and create something from your CAD file. Um, let me think if there's anything else I want to show you before we move on. Uh, one thing I did set up, which is what I always do before I start a, a project, is I always set up the text. So if I type TX, I have over here, in the left hand side I have different uh, fonts and to do that it's, it's something as easy as um, you select the font even if you type something let's say I type something if I select the font and I click element properties click edit slash new and I want to duplicate it or rename it so what I did is I duplicated it so let's just say Arial um, let's say quarter inch times new Roman just just as an example so now I renamed it, and you, as you can see, it added it to my list. So now all I'm going to do is change the font to Times New Roman. Times New Roman, click Apply, OK, OK. Now you can see it changed the, the text. So now I can click here, and here's, here's the text, and all I have to do is scroll down. So I always, I always do that in the beginning. Also, what you can do is change the leader type. So if I click the leader here, you can tell it's, it's, it's not my favorite leader. So um, if, if you guys want to know what I just did, all I did was click add left leader, add right leader. So I clicked add left leader. Um, if you want to change that, you go to element properties, edit new, and then there's a leader arrowhead under this. And what I like to use there is the arrow filled 15 degrees. Click apply, OK. Now you can see it's this nice leader. Now I, I always tend to do this. I mean, if w once you do it once, you can set up a template and never do it again, which maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to set up a template as well. Um, and there's one more thing before we go on to the next tutorial um, that I want to show you that I always end up doing. And you might not want to do this, but this is just kind of what I like to do. So let's say we have, I'm going to draw two reference planes here, and I have a dimension. A DI for dimension. So now you can see I already changed the font to that. But if I go below one foot, you can see how it says 9 inches. Now, before you set anything up, if I go to settings, um, op, sorry, settings and annotation uh, project units sorry if you go to settings and projects units under length there's this little check mark suppress zero feet so if I don't have it checked off this is what it looks like zero foot and nine inches I personally don't like that at all I, I, I there's something I, it's a big pet peeve of mine so in order to turn it off all you do is go to settings project units or UN and length and you could change this, as you can see, you could change them for all different, uh, all your different dimensions. And suppress zero feet. Click OK, OK. And now when I go below, oops, oh, I locked it, sorry. Um, if I go below one foot, now it just says eight inches, which is a lot nicer than zero foot eight inches in my opinion. So that's usually what I do to set up the drawing. And coming up next, I'm going to show you how to create a foundation plan and set up the levels. Thank you.